Bulba Show. Hey out there, Professor... Ugh. Hey out there, Bulbatube fans. Professor Bulba here, ready to do something I haven't done for a while since addressing Sabrina and her badge. I'm Sabrina. Play with me. Play with me. A theory video. And when I say theory, I actually mean theory with real evidence. Not a theory like, here's my opinion based on utter nonsense. <laughs> Think I'll call it a theory. No. Speculation on a lack of evidence is not a theory. Bad YouTubers. Today, I bring you a crazy concept of a lady wearing the skull of Cubone as a diaper. You heard me. Get your knickers out of a knot because things are about to get real. Very quickly make sure to like and subscribe, also hit that notification button so you don't miss any videos. Before we can dive right into Cubone's fragile skull being an absorbent diaper, we must first examine all the facts around it. We will look at Mandibuzz, Volebi, Cubone, and then piece it all together. Mandibuzz's name in Japanese is Vulgina. Maybe it's Vulgina. Either way, it sounds exactly like you think I'm trying to say. Before you get your head too far into the gutter, Vulgina is a mixture of Vulture and Regina, which is Latin for Queen. Regina is the capital of Saskatchewan, Canada, whereas Regina Spector is an awesome Russian singer. But let's get back to our favorite Vulgina, Mandibuzz. And by Vulgina, I definitely meant Vulgina. Allegedly, Mandibuzz hunt weaker Pokemon for their bones and have various uses for them. According to several Pokedex entries, they decorate themselves with bones. Later in Pokemon Sun, we learn that it's meant to attract males, but no male Mandibuzz have ever been found. This means that there very well may be male Mandibuzz somewhere. Perhaps one day there will be a male version, sort of like Meowstic, with, you know, different stats and movesets. Its Pokemon Moon Dex entry states that its choicest food is Cubone. This makes a lot of sense. Cubone is an orphan Pokemon which probably hasn't learned to defend itself, let alone gain the strength to do anything without its mother's protection. Its Moon Dex entry continues with, It circles in the sky, keeping a keen eye out for Pokemon in weakened states. I'd say being orphaned is a weakened state. Its Ultra Sun Dex reveals that it does in fact use the bones of Cubone for the construction of its nest. Now let's take a look at Volabi. Is it Volabi or Volabi? Volabi. I'm gonna go with Vulture plus Baby, thus Volabi. Kind of like someone names their kid Colby. Maybe Colby, not Colby. Volabi is the diaper Pokemon that wears skulls as diapers. Damn what exquisite taste it has. Some like to think that it's a human skull, but without the maxilla and mandible, it's hard to tell exactly what it is. Also, look at its stats. It's just over a foot tall, half a meter, and nine kilograms, so like close to 20 pounds. I doubt it would fit snug into a human skull. It would fit much better into something smaller. Either that or just got hella sinister and now Manibuzz hunts human children and uses their skulls as diapers. Cool. Guess it's dark type for a reason. But like Bulba Brother, when Volby is born, it already is wearing the skull. Well, I would love to go by that logic, but let's take a look at Timber, who is holding a fucking log when it's born from an egg. Oh, and then there's Klefki, who is the key collector, and is somehow born with keys, yet its dex entry explicitly states that it collects them. Yeah, I mean, it collects keys when it's in its egg. That makes sense. And let's not forget about Kangaskhan, that are, you know, born with their babies. Okay, you made your freaking point. Let's move on. Volibee's Ultra Sun Dex entry states that Mandibuzz gives it bones to wear. So far we know that Mandibuzz hunt Cubone specifically, and that Mandibuzz gives bones to its young to wear. And to make a nest. Cubone. Cubone is such a neat Pokemon in that it sparks the imagination for so many awesome theories. Although I don't subscribe to many of the ideas, the thought of them are pretty damn neat. To tie directly into Mandibuzz and Volibee, its Ultra Sun Dex entry reads, at night, it weeps loudly for its dead mother. But those cries only attract its natural enemy, Mandibuzz. Yep, natural enemy. But like Bulba Bro, Cubone's skull looks nothing like Volibee's diapers. Ha, huh. this is where your theory falls to shit. Have you ever seen Cubone's skull? No, you haven't. No one has. We just see the skull of its dead mother, which is 
most likely an evolved Pokemon. Fact of the matter is, Cubone is an infant and its head shape and size do not yet match that of its mother. Based on the anime, it seems that the skull is not the same size or shape as it can fully spin all the way around its head. Although the anime is a poor example of continuity in the Pokemon world. But still there. Multiple Pokedex entry mentioned the echoing cry of Cubone in its mother's skull. If something is skin tight, there would be no echo. However, a hollow structure would create an echo. Perhaps the easiest way to exemplify this is with this picture. Official Pokemon artwork gave a close up look of what is happening under the skull. As you can clearly see, it's not the same structure at all, thus opening up the possibility for a skull to be a snug fit for Volavi. Volavi wears diapers that are provided by its mother, whom specifically preys on crying Cubones mourning the loss of its own mother. To me, that is evidence all lined up perfectly. It just fits. Like a diaper. It fits like a diaper. What do you think? Is Cubone the diaper of the Pokemon world? Or is the skull around Volabi another Pokemon entirely? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. For more Pokemon facts, check out my video about legendary cats. Yeah, you heard me. Or learn some sweet Generation 1 facts. This has been Professor Bulba, signing out.